Hello Lilas, welcome back to my channel guys. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click the bell to be a part of the notification squad. If you are a Lola that wants to be a part of my paid channel membership, which I and well, we refer to it as the Chatterbox. The link is in the description bar. And also you can go to the About Me tab and you can find the link there for the paid channel membership. It is $1.99 to join. Um, you do have to be at least 18 years old to join. Um, so basically the perks is just exclusive live streams at least once a month. Um, I also do updates in there and um, I usually make sure I post there for you know babies that's going up for sale just to give the uh, channel membership you know um, a place that it's going to be listed and um, a lot of times it helps them not be able to miss it because um, they get notification or like email I think it sends you a email when I upload uh, to the membership so that's that's how that goes um, sometime I upload videos there just for the chatterbox as well. All right. And then of course, I always have to remind you guys that we do have the new heart, uh, super thanks button where you can do a super thanks. And what that does is highlight your comment in the comment section and make it stand out. And it also shows just appreciation for the video, but you can always just show appreciation for the video by giving this video a thumbs up and also leaving me a comment. And those ways are free. Um, I do understand that everybody's not in the position to, you know, join the membership or do the super thanks, but um, it is appreciated for those that, that go out their way to do that part. Now, um, I have Gigi here and I wanted to talk about Gigi as well as open and sold out editions and limited editions. Yes, we're back on this again. Um, but mainly the first thing I want to talk about is Gigi. Gigi is supposed to be a baby that is going to go up for sale once she is rooted. I am still struggling with that. I'm, I'm struggling very hard, guys. So um, don't hate me if she you don't see her up for sale. Um, but we will see. She is still in rotation in line for hair. Um, I got a root prototype Taya, um, this week and next week. Hopefully she'll be done by the end of next week if I can stay really focused and get her done. Let's just pray no other life interruptions happen. <laughs> um, and so after her, I was toggling i was i was thinking Gigi, um even though i really want my Jaden to get his hair too um but you know um i try to go in the order of which they may be up for sale um the fact that <laughs> i'm struggling with Gigi, i'm kind of like is it really gonna make a difference um so i don't know i may finish rooting Jaden before i root her i don't know um but it's it's just hard for me um some babies are harder for me to sell than the others um i it took me a lot to get to the point where i said okay i'm gonna sell nobi nobi was one that i wanted to keep um but right now i've kept so many of my babies and i just cannot afford to keep all of them so i've been doing like a Russian roulette with them like okay so I let Zora go but I kept Elijah okay I'm gonna let Nobi go because I got Nori and I have uh India so I have to let the proto the other prototype go so I kept prototype kit <laughs> so letting prototype Taya go it's like give take give take give take so anyway um, so that's where I'm at with that. But anyway, um, if all things go well, she she will go up for sale. But I, I have picked out her hair and everything. And then I put the hair up against her. I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to be so cute when she gets her hair. I don't know. So um, I just really, really, I don't know. She just 
don't know, something about her just makes me not want to let her go. So, um, we will deal with that as we go. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, um, so Gigi is the Gianna Sculpt um, by Kathy Romero Biscotti from uh, Silicone Studio 2. I always say two behind it now because they have two websites. So, um, but she is an open edition as far as I know. Um, and so, um, I knew that going in and, um, I do like collecting open edition, uh, babies as well as limited editions, um, sold out the, the editions that are very small and limited that are more likely to sell out um, do, in my opinion, carry a lot more value um, to a certain extent. Like, they carry a lot of value for collectors that like to collect rare and um, rare finds and like very, very limited editions. Um, to collectors that just collect, they don't have to. There's no such, they don't put no weight on like the brand or the, the limited number or anything like that, then it means absolutely nothing to them. Rather it's a million of them or it's five. Um, but for me, for my value system and for my personal collection, I am a little slow to let go of a very limited or sold out baby than I am one that's unlimited. Also, when I'm deciding on, uh, when I see a baby that's completed and I love the artistry of the doll and the sculpting is amazing. And then I look at, is it an open edition baby? Is it one that may pop up later that another artist may do just as well or better? Or can I get it at another date? Can I paint it later myself? Um, or is this like very, like a very exquisite uh, one that I probably would never find one that's reborn like this. And in that case, even if it's an open edition, I kind of will be, it puts more value to it for me. Um, and let's say, okay, I'm gonna give you an example, but let me, let me finish this thought. Um, and then if the, if it's in a sold out edition kit, I will pay more for it because I know I can't get it anywhere. It's not that I want to, it's just that that's the way my mind automatically works. Now, let me give you an example of something too as well. And this is just me and my, how I collect, um, my, let's say said artist, one of my favorite artists paint a sculpt. Um, and I love the way they reborn it. It's absolutely amazing. It's done by Joe Blow, not a very known sculptor, never heard of them before until this one came about. And um, sculpting is, you know, intermediate level, not like, you know, um, some of the known, known sculptors like Bonnie Brown and Natalie Blake. Those are two names that first come to my, my mind, right? Um, I am not willing <laughs> to pay my top dollar for that other sculpt. And I know that sounds really crazy and it might make me sound very like shallow or a name brand chaser. It's not about the brand though, the name. It's not about the name brand. It's actually, believe it or not, it, it just happened that they are a name brand. It's more about the sculpting. I know that I typically like that style of sculpting and I know that it's usually very realistic to my taste. So I'm less likely to be disappointed in the sculpt when I get the doll than any other brand. Also, if I don't like that one, it's most likely um, going to hold more value than the one that most collectors don't really know a lot about that sculptor work. Sadly to say, that's when brand name does matter. Um, <laughs> I will pay more for a Bonnie Brown sculpt open edition than I will a limited sold out edition from Joe Blow. Um, 
that's just the way my mind works. I'm a Bonnie Brown fan. So I think we put our own value system on what we collect and what we're willing to pay. We've been saying that for the longest. I think some people get it and some people don't. Now here's the thing about sculptors that I don't think they really get. Um, sometimes they make these choices and they do certain things and they're basically like, well, I got to feed my family, blah, 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 blah. But they got to keep in mind that we are the ones that's helping you feed your family because we are the consumers. So the consumers matter. We, we matter what we want, what we like, you know, it matters. You can do all these things, but it might slow down your dollar. So I think. A lot of the sculptors that does well, they, they found their niche. They found something that they enjoy doing that's profitable for them. And what they realize a lot of collectors like. And so it kind of works for them. Um, Bonnie Brown has such a presence in this industry with her sculpting. Till at this point, Bonnie Brown can do an open edition or unlimited edition. And it's going to sell until we can't get it anymore i mean people are still buying and painting saskias and limbs and chasing down scarlets and levi's and all these you know even some of her little older her older kids uh oh my god i can't even think of some of them um sally and all of them they they're you know sorsha um people still chase her kids so when she does an open edition, people are going to go crazy over it as if it's a sold out edition or a limited edition anyway, um, because she's a whole brand. Um, she is the GOAT. <laughs> um, I don't think no one is, well, in my opinion, there's no one tops Bonnie Brown record of selling kits like vinyls. That's just my, from what I see, I don't think I see. And then, you know, we have other sculptors that have a brand that people, some people only, you know, go after Laura Lee Eagles or um, Natalie Blick. There's Audrey Stoetti. There's Oka R. There's other very reputable known names that when you see the name or someone say the name, most collectors recognize their work. Um, we have a lot of new upcoming sculptors or sculptors that I'm just getting familiar with that I think do, are doing really nice work as well. But again, um, when it comes to like what I'm willing to pay and value system and stuff like that, I have my own little game that I play in my head, you know, and I'm really fast with it. It's not like I sit there and go, okay check this off does it do this does it do that these are things that automatically like soon as I see a doll sculptor name artist and I you know even people when they're trying to sell their doll second market it really eats my grits um when they don't put who it was painted by because you can post these dolls up and especially a lot of people don't take very clear photos it gives me no incentive to want to dig further into your post. Um, I don't know why a lot of people, a lot of collectors, um, mostly new collectors, refuse to acknowledge the artist or the sculptor in their post. I've done it for a little while at one point and I'll tell you I was being petty. I was doing it because I was like, I ain't promoting these people and I don't want nobody to know. Or if I was just not for sale and I was just wanting to post my baby, I was like, I'm not sharing because I don't want everybody running to the same artist or the same sculptor or whatever. That was a very quick petty phase, immature phase that I went through. But I don't post it on every single time I post a baby, but... If I post the baby up for sale, I like to list the sculptor and the artist's name because that is important. And a lot of people wonder why their dolls do not sell because they're not putting the names of, you know, a lot of collectors do want to know. And it helps. Also, I'm going to tell you something else. When you put the doll up for sale and you say it's, um, let's say you say it's Scarlet by Bonnie Brown. 
well, I'm going to take that and put it in my Google search and I'm going to pull up McPherson and I'm going to look down and look at the dimensions of this doll. Okay, it's 19 inches. It's got uh, three fourth arms, full legs. I need to know all that stuff. If your pictures are not showing me enough, I need to look at the skull because I want to know what I like this. Is this a good size? Because, you know, newborn can be a whole range of sizes. You know, people say newborn. Okay, so. Um, all that information matters in a post when you're trying to sell, I think. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm just funny like that. And I don't know if other people are like that as well. Um, but let me know what are some of the things that you look for information that you like to see in a for sale post. Um, I know people, some people are going to say, most people going to say they like to see the price listed that's very very debatable topic uh to list or not to list um sometime i do sometime i don't um i did a little chart in my chatterbox at one point i kind of gave an idea roughly of what my dolls normally sell for so forth and so and, and whatever um i did think of i do have a price for gg if i was to sell gg um rooted and everything she would be 3900 shipped um but that is not my typical price um but i'm able to do a little bit less on for her i'm able to sell her for less if i decide to sell her because um her kit is less and so yeah so i can still you know still make what i'm accustomed to making off of my dolls and still provide her at a good rate. Um, not always will I do that. Not always do everybody do that with their pricing of their babies. Um, some people will take a $600 kit and they're still selling it for four to $500. I've seen it, I see it every day in my feed. Um, that's their prerogative, that's their right. A lot of those artists are, you know, they have a, fo a huge following and stuff like that. And so, and they don't put out babies back to back. That's another thing too. Um, some artists put out babies back to back, back to back, back to back. And their work is kind of cookie cutter. Nothing wrong with that. If it works for them, that's fine. They have a style that people love. And, you know, sometimes, you know, artists change their style. It makes you mad. So they're doing what works for them. I'm just saying that they have like a formula where every ba the br every brown baby is painted and shaded the same as that way. Every light baby is painted and shaded the same way. They have the same art, same this. And so, um, therefore, they can, like, have a standard price or um, they can, and they can also kick out babies back to back, back to back to back to back. I talked to some artists. They literally make up their their paints and they have them in jars, their colors, and they literally you know, just reuse step by step with, you know, um, their babies. And so they're able to do that. Um, but then there are artists that, you know, wing it and they take longer to paint and then they take longer before you see a new baby out completed by them for sale. So, um, you know, that, that changes things too a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I got on selling, buying, <laughs> the way that I shop, um, how I feel about limited and unlimited. I really love smaller editions, but I am happy to be able to constantly get my hands on something that's, you know, open edition um, kits as well. So I like the mixture of both. Um, I do understand that the sculptors are trying to make a living. Um, I also understand that with vinyl, um, they have to sell a whole lot to really make, you know, really good money off of those sculpts. So I can see why they would want it to be like ongoing or a very large edition. Um, but I think like some of the big name artists, some of their babies, I would love for them to be more rare like the old days. Um, it does affect the bottom line for um, artists as well when they sell. Two, um, back in the day, if you had a very sold out kit or the limited editions, the artists were able to make more money off of those. Um, now it's really like, 
we don't care. <laughs> we can get it later, <laughs> you know? Or the artists keep painting the same kit over and over and over again. Like, oh, she'll paint another one in two weeks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, but, you know, we find, everybody find their way of collecting and what works for them and what's fun for them and what's comfortable for them, you know, as far as their budget and all that great jazz, right? And there's no right or wrong way of collecting. There's no right or way of how you sell your babies other than as long as you're being honest. Um, that's the only thing, you know, both ways as a buyer or a seller. But other than that, there is no right or wrong way, right? Um, as well as collecting, I mean. And, you know, I do like to buy authentic kits. Um, I know that... You know, that's a big deal in the community. And some people think that, you know, buying off of Amazon and scrupalupas and all that and stuff is the way to go. And I'm not for it. Um, but again, like everybody has made it very clear that they can do what they want to do. It's their money. And if that's what they choose to do, that's their business. I'm going to mind mine over here and stay in my lane. <laughs> And I'm going to spend my money where I want to spend my money at. So for me, it just makes more sense for me to just spend the extra $20 or $50 and buy the kit from a reputable site. Get my COA. <sighs> Not lose my reputation or ability to sell in the community, etc., etc., etc. And just morally just makes me feel better. Um as a person as a human being but that's just again that is me um i am not the one to force my beliefs down anyone's throat so that's all i'll say about that but in the meantime somebody got some decisions to make <laughs> will she or will she not be on the the sale table in a few weeks next month <laughs> Will she be here Christmas? <laughs> you know, I wish that I could just one day like have all my personal babies rooted and just be able to just stop collecting and just enjoy just where I'm at. Like I have three babies, four that's personal babies that five actually. Oh my God. I have five personal babies that need to be rooted and as far as silicone go and it would be amazing to have them all rooted by christmas but i don't know if that's gonna happen but that would be my goal to at least have Jaden and nori in india rooted by christmas that would be amazing and i'm also going on a strike on. I haven't been buying any more kits right now and I'm just gonna work with what I have in here and um, I am not actually trying to collect anything right now although I am so in love with the new uh, kit by Laura Tuzeras, uh Little Jude. I love that baby. Oh my gosh, I love him so much. Um, can't wait to paint him. Um, that one I definitely have to get. So, you know, I have, there's another one out there that I really want, but, and it's available now. It's actually two of them out there that, but I'm just like, I'm not buying any more kits unless I sell a couple of the ones that I already got and started painting and have not finished. I've been working on Cameron by Laura Tuzer Ross for like 20 years. I don't know if I'm gonna do a good job on it, so I just kind of abandoned it because I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing good with this. So we'll see. Cause I'm seeing other ones that I'm like intimidated. I'm like, oh, I want theirs. <laughs> so, so I abandoned it. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. I know this is a long, long video. Bye bye.